on the Father's Day. Surround yourself with blindness and expect to see. You cannot run with and expect to be happy and fulfilled. You cannot hang out with a bunch of defeated, going nowhere, no reason men, and be an overcomer. You are who you hang around. So I want to ask you, what is the name of your porch? Sisters, this is the message that I've been waiting to share with you, and I'm excited about it. It, 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 it plays with this whole survival mentality that we have uh, throughout the body of Christ today. Sometimes we just ask God, you know, just, just Lord, I just said, I can just hold on, Jesus, to everything. No, 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 no. Surviving is not enough. Jesus didn't die just so you could survive. He has a strategy for you to win. The pool of Bethesda was designated for the halt, the lame, and the blind. And they congregated there on their porches, on their porches, each in its own category. They congregated there, surviving in the midst of a completely paradoxical situation. One side, people are busy moving. In fact, they're near the sheep market. Industry is going on. Productivity is going on. Business is going on, children are playing, commerce is moving, politics are going on, but these are the folk that are stuck. Five porches for five different reasons, five different categories, they do not share the same reason, but it has left the same result. One man is blind, that's why he's there. And the other man is halt, that's why he's there. He can, he can see, but he's halt, and he cannot move. The other man, he walks fine. He can see good, but he's, he's, he's withered. He's, he's withered. He can't work because he's withered. The only thing they have in common is that each of them have some malady, some trauma, some physical infirmity that has brought them to this place. Now, the Pool of Bethesda is also indicative of the times in which the text is taken. There were, there were no medical hospitals to take these people that they might be made whole. This was a holding place for people who weren't dead but weren't alive. Stuck in a state betwixt and between not quite being well enough to enter into the commerce and the life and the happiness going around them, but not dead enough to be in the cemetery, they were stuck. <clears throat> and every day that they lived, they enjoyed the fact that they had survived. Because in an environment that lends itself to people who have been through catastrophic situations, it is not uncommon to lose somebody every day. So whether you got well or not, instead of celebrating the fact that you got well, to some degree, the very fact that you are still alive is celebration within itself. I want you to understand this because the text suggests a pathology evolves around this pool. A pathology that is given to people who have survived. I want you to listen at them and think about you. Because it is possible to develop a mentality to fit your environment that simply makes the best of a bad situation. I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not living my life to the fullest. I'm not getting the most out of my life. So I'm going to bring my expectation down to my reality and enjoy the fact that at least they didn't carry me off to the board today. I'm still here. 
we're still married. You know how your mama told you, you still got a roof over your head. Never mind that it leaks and it's caving in and it hasn't been painted for 20 years. Just, just thank God you still got a roof over top of your head. Some of the torture of the pool of Bethesda exists in the commerce in which it is surrounded. Because if I am down and everybody else is down around me, then down becomes normal. But what makes down terrible is when you are down and you can still see up. If you're, if you're going to keep a people enslaved, don't teach them how to read. Because reading people escape their environment and see lifestyles of other people and dare to want it. Don't let them have a television because they'll see that all the young people are not barefoot and living in hot cell. They'll see when people see something beyond them, generally it will make them go after it. I'm a big believer in exposure, exposing people to different things. A lot of times people don't want anything because they have not been exposed to anything. When we read that the pool of Bethesda existed beside the sheep market, we don't pay any attention to it, but the contrast is glaring at me that on one hand hurts of sheep are being brought down to the market to be sold and commerce and business and life and productivity is going on and on the other side they're picking their sores and wrapping their wounds because they are stuck in a state of survival. This may be the most important message you will ever hear in your life because I am learning as a leader I don't care how anointed you are I don't care how gifted you are to speak I don't care how well you can sing you can, just because you're anointed does not mean you escape the, the subculture that you develop around dysfunction that holds you a prisoner sing all you want to Canaries sing, but they're still in a cage. Preach all you want to, but you can say something with your mouth that you do not live with your life. The blind had a porch. The lame had a porch. And the halt had a porch. You know, when, when I do workshops outside of the church on, on leadership and, 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 and human development, I tell people, if you want to know where you are or what porch you're on, look in your cell phone. Because your cell phone will tell me who you talk to. And whoever you spend your time talking to, that's the porch you're on. Ooh, it's going to be tight this morning, Lord. You cannot surround yourself with blindness and expect to see. You cannot run with packs of angry women and expect to be happy and fulfilled. You cannot hang out with a bunch of defeated, going nowhere, no visa men and be an overcomer. You are who you hang around. So I want to ask you, what is the name of your porch? You can't run around with prejudiced people and not be prejudiced. You can't run around with arrogant people and not be arrogant. What is the name of your porch? Blind people all got together because they understood each other. They enabled each other. They empowered each other. Blind man said, I can't see the other one. I know what you mean. 
Well, I can see shadows of them, I can't see anything at all. They develop a system of survival built around what would not go away. Oh, it sounds like our communities. We have systems of survival built around what will not go away. If we could heal it, we would leave it. But since we can't heal it, we make it nice and comfortable and fix it up and say we like it. Nobody likes to be afraid to come out of their house. Nobody likes to be mugged. Nobody likes to have their car stolen. Nobody likes being raped. Nobody likes being broke. Nobody likes being lonely. Nobody likes being fired. Nobody likes being a victim of domestic violence. Nobody likes negativity. But if you're not careful, you will build a, a system around something that you have lost the faith that it could change. Still to come on the Potter's Touch. That's the way somebody's coming out. You slow, but you coming. You dragging, but you coming. You need a strategy, but you coming. It took you a while to position yourself, but here you come. Hard, but I'm moving. Hard, but I'm moving. I die in a cage. I want to run in the wild. We can do what it is without limit, without being boxed in a cage, without being hindered. I want to run in the wild of my destiny. I want to run in the wild of my purpose. You're telling us to branch out and it's time to shift and just about taking it to the next level and to, um, just thinking outside of the four walls. I've got to get out of this cage. God has given us a place around where we are passing to take over that region for the, for the kingdom of God. You're frustrated about something that's just an incubator to take you to the next dimension. Now we're going to grow and go to global missions. No more limits, no more boundaries. The cage is open. You don't have any excuses anymore on why you can't fulfill your purpose and complete your assignment. To register for this international gathering, visit pastorsandleaders.org or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. Jesus comes down to the pool and the Bible says when he looked around and saw this lame man and he saw him lying there and how long he had been lying there the answer Ask the question. <laughs> you say Jesus is the answer, and I agree with you, and he is the answer, but the answer, the, the, the sovereign God, the all-knowing God, the God who is omniscient, the God who has seen the end from the beginning, when he saw this man's position and his condition, the God who knows everything says, do you, do you want to be made whole? I used to think that this was an unintelligent question. Because how could you see somebody who was lame 38 years and ask them do they want to be well? That seems silly to me. Until I read a little closer, it said when he saw him lie there, when he saw his behavior, You see what I'm saying? You got me, don't you? He, he, said, he said, nothing in your actions lets me know that you want to get up. this long and be that comfortable 
cannot do this against your will. You and I are going to have to be in agreement. I can't tell you how many people I meet who curse their own deliverance. Subconsciously, they sabotage their own success. They run away from them, anybody who loves them, because they don't feel lovable. And if anything starts going too good, they'll find something bad to focus on until they mess it up because they are hell-bent on staying in their bed. Now, I'm talking about them, but I want you to think about you. Some women like hateful men. You ain't happy till he punch you. And even though you called in for prayer, you didn't like nobody nice. What's wrong with you that better don't look good? Ooh, I'm losing some amens, Lord. They're going down on me. They're going down on me right now. They're going down. When he sent you better, it was so foreign, you didn't like it. Have you developed an addiction to your affliction? Because even God says, I don't want to take you where you don't want to go. Wilt thou be made whole? Do you want to change? Or do you just want God to make convenient your porch? I want some air conditioning, Lord. Yeah, I want it, man. I want some air conditioning, Lord. If I could have some carpet up in here, sure would be nice. But you're still on the porch. You just decorated it. <laughs> I want to be able to get me a new dress when I want to go out on the weekends. You're just decorating the porch. Can I go a little deeper? So Jesus says to the man, he said, wilt thou be made whole? And he, let me ask you, wilt thou be made whole? Then Jesus is confused because he said, I ought to be able to look at your situation and tell you don't want to stay there. 
but because you seem so comfortable in it. <laughs> I'm confused. Will thou be made? He said, well, yeah, yeah, but let me show you why I'm like this. First of all, I'm like this because of what I didn't get. I didn't have anybody to carry me into the pool. It's not that I didn't have opportunities, but when I got the opportunity, I didn't have the support. Mm -hmm. So I'm like this because of who wouldn't carry me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like this because of where I was raised. I'm like this color of my skin. I'm like this because I didn't have a father. I'm like this because I didn't have a mother. I'm like this because of my first husband. I'm, I'm like this because of what my pastor said about me. I'm like this. Oh, I'm losing amens, Lord. I'm losing, they're going down quick too, Lord. You gotta give me something to bring them back because they about gone now, they just, they just about. Anytime you justify your condition, you have given it license to stay. So I'm like this because of what I didn't have. And then the second reason I'm like this is when I was, when I did decide to try, when I did to try, I tried a couple of times, I did. I, I dated a couple of times, I did, Lord, I did. When I tried, it didn't go right. I, just, I don't know what the world was wrong when I tried. I tried, it, 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 uh, I tried, Lord, and I, while, I was, while I was getting up, uh, somebody got in front of me. I just stayed in. They wanted it. I want to ask the people that want it, do you want it bad enough to get in somebody's way to go get it? Because you can't be polite and get this. There comes a time that you got to say, if you don't want nothing, get out of the way. If you, excuse me, I got to go for it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. High five somebody say, I'm going to get it this year. Yeah, this is, this is my year. Something don't go quite shot. This is my yeah! I survived last year! I don't succeed! If survival is not enough, give God a 30 second crazy praise of it! season, legend said that an angel came down and troubled the waters. 
If the season only came once a year and you had 38 years, you had 38 chances to position yourself Now you see, you know the day is coming. 364 days before it gets there. You can't wait till you see the angel to start getting up out of the bed. You had 364 days to start arranging yourself so that the next time the angel comes by this pool, in here is so close that the Lord told me to tell you, jump in. Tell you the neighbor, survival is not enough. Survival. Survival is not enough. Survival is not enough. Survival is not enough. Survival is not enough. It's not enough. It's not. It's not enough. It's not enough. Oh, I'm out of time. I hate to let this go right here because there are some things that I think you need to understand and change your perspective and how you look at the vicissitudes of life that come against you. But I, I pray that God will strengthen you and bless you and fortify you and build you up in every place where you may feel torn down. Surviving, you got to get away from that. It's not enough. Nobody wins the Olympics by mistake. Success is always intentional. It's all been leading up to this moment. It's time for you to win your race. Do not allow the cares of this world to destroy your passion for living, but run after your destiny. With your gift of any size, you'll receive Bishop's message, Run After Your Destiny, on CD from the Run Your Race series. Just visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. How can we be disciples and be standing still? Deal. Look at your neighbor and say it's time to run. And when your gift is $75 or more, you'll receive our perpetual calendar with 366 days of hope and guidance from Scripture, as well as the entire four-part series, Run Your Race, on DVD. That includes a bonus message, The Gate is Open, from the Pastors and Leadership Conference. You've got to untangle all of the things that you have been through, reset, start over, reboot, and go to a whole new level. A miracle that defies anything you have ever seen God do before. I almost call this sermon, The Wait Is Over, because somebody's been waiting for 38 years, but the Lord said this Sunday, The Wait Is Over.